The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. My name is Caleb. In this episode, I'm going to build an automated hot and cold water dispenser. It's kind of like one of those rigs that they have at a fast food restaurant where they just pop a cup into a machine, hit small, medium, or large, and it fills up to that level. The problem I'm trying to solve is the amount of time I spend every day standing at the sink waiting for a water bottle to fill up. The minute to a minute and a half that it takes is just completely unacceptable. Having the ability to just pop my water bottle into a thing, punch a preset and walk away will give me some of those precious seconds back. So strap in and let's get to it. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. All right, here's the idea. A device that's connected to the main plumbing in my house that's got a water filter and a hot water heater in it that I can control with a touch and it will dispense a specific amount of liquid. To do that, I need to electronically control the flow of water and a sensor that can detect how much water is moving through the system and have all of that controlled by a microcontroller. After doing some research, I found that any of these flow sensors or valves that are designed for Raspberry Pi or Arduino are not food safe. Especially when you get up to around 200 degrees Fahrenheit, they're especially not food safe. I did find some commercial options though. They are out there, but they're super expensive and not an option for this project. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to build my own valves and figure out a different system for detecting how much water is flowing through the whole system. And also remember that all of the code, files, CAD files, STL files, everything for this project is available on the Element 14 community website. There's a link in the description that will take you right to the page that has all of those files. Let's take a look at some of the parts that we're gonna use in this project. First up, to control everything, we have a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. And for the memory in that Raspberry Pi, we're gonna use a Delkin 16 gig utility SD card. It's a little more industrial than say a Kingston or something else. For the display on the system, I'm gonna use the Adafruit Pi TFT 2.8 inch capacitive touch touchscreen. This will be great for designing a UI on. To control the water flow, I went with a standard household quarter turn shutoff valve. We'll just take the handle off and adapt it to a servo. And speaking of servos, this is a servo we're gonna use. It's a high torque servo, so I hope it's got enough to turn that quarter turn ball valve. To power the Raspberry Pi and the high torque servos, we have an XP power 110 to five volt DC converter. Controlling power to the hot water dispenser is a very standard relay module. And of course, I've got to put some of my favorite buttons into this project. I'm not quite sure what they're going to do yet, but we're going to put them in. And last but not least, we've got the main components for this project. On the right, we have the 1500 watt instant hot water dispenser, and on the left is the water filter. I just got a brand new laser cutter in the shop, and I wanted to use that as much as possible throughout this build. So in the design, you'll see lots of influence around laser cut designs. First, let's take a look at the servo controlled quarter turn shutoff valve. We need to control this with a servo, and the way that I thought to do that would be to cut a little piece of acrylic that fits onto that shaft there and has hole spacings here to connect to a round servo horn. With the servo connected just like that, I can put some screws through these holes and it will hold that all together. And now what I needed to do was connect the servo to the valve here. And to do that, I've got a plate the servo can mount to with some T-slots so it can mount to the backboard of the unit. And just a couple of brackets here. With also has some T-slots to secure it to the bracket on the servo. That should work and it will mount to the backboard just like that. And this is what the unit will look like when it's completed. There's an alcove here where I can set the vessel for water to come down from the silicon tubes down into the vessel. There's a 
mounting plate here for the TFT and the Raspberry Pi will sit on the back of that and three of my favorite buttons on there. Over here, we can take this side off and see that there is the water heater on that side. Over on this side is the water filter and all of the other electronics like the power supply and the uh, servo board and the relay and stuff all mount onto this wall. And if we take this plate out, we can see back here, that's where we mount the servo valves. They're mounted on a piece of wood that's attached to this back piece of acrylic and it needed a little bit more rigidity. So I put a piece of, I think it's six mil underlayment plywood. Now that we have the design all done, let's get to building some stuff. With the servo board done, I got the Raspberry Pi ready and wrote some code for the relays, the servos, and the TFT. So let's take a look at that. There's nothing really fancy going on with this code here. It's written in Python since it's running on a Raspberry Pi, but really all that's happening is there's an infinite loop that's running down here. And when one of the buttons is pushed, specifically one of the favorite buttons, it opens the valve and then it fires off a timer. That timer starts and that timer has a custom callback, which when it runs out, closes the valve and then redraws the button. This is defined with a number of seconds specific to that button, and those are defined up here. So 25 seconds after I hit the button for favorite zero, it will close and my French press will be full of hot water ready for delicious coffee. If you want to take a closer look at all of this code, you can find it on the Element 14 community. Click on the link in the description and you should be able to find all of it there. Are you an engineer, electronics hobbyist or maker? Join the Element 14 community where you can learn about new products and technologies, see cool projects and connect directly with the people that make the products and engineers that use them. Join now! All right, here we are at the end of the project. It is complete and it works. As you can see, it is not turned on right now, but I will turn that on so you can see the boot process. In the meantime, I'll show you the drip tray. This just slides out. When it gets full, I just dump it in the sink right next to me. And then it's supposed to just slide right back in, just like that. And this is almost done booting. We'll get to see the UI here. And there we go. You can see there's three buttons on the side. The top one is the heater. It will turn on the hot water heater via the relay. And we'll do that now so we can have some hot water for the demo. The next button down is just a hot water toggle. I hit that, hot water comes out until I hit it again. 
Same thing with cold water, hit that, it's a toggle. Cold water comes out till I hit it again. One last thing about the heater, it's also set up in a cron job. So at 5.30 in the morning, the heater will come on and heat the water. So I will have hot water for coffee at 6 a.m. when I wake up. And again at 2.30, so I can have some coffee in the afternoon as well. Along the bottom, we've got four presets. We've got a French press, water bottle, coffee cup, and a pint glass. Those are set up on timers, so if I press French press, it will run hot water for 25 seconds. And that's how I'm measuring it rather than doing some kind of a flow sensor, it's just based on time. And it seems to work out pretty precisely for the types of fluids I'm working with. And these three buttons don't do anything yet. They're hooked up and they will work. They're just not defined in software. What I'm thinking is that they will be toggles. Push it in, cold water comes out until I let go. Same with some hot water and then one other button for another function. Well, that hot water's heating, let's try a pint glass. We'll set that in there and we'll hit pint glass. And that should fill up and stop pretty close to the top. Let's hope that I don't have to hit e-stop. Nope, awesome, there it is. We've got a glass of water. Great. Now I did have this on, the hot water heater should be pretty close to heated up. So let's pop in my well, well used French press and see that thing fill up. Now we have some hot water and I can see the steam. I don't know if you can, but I sure can. And there we go. Got some steamy hot water there. Yep, that is hot enough for coffee. Awesome. So that's it. It is done, it works. It's an appliance that's in my house that I built that I'm gonna use every day, a couple of times a day. This is pretty great. Well, that's all we have for today. I'm really happy with the way that this turned out. It works, it's functional, it's installed, and I'll have hot water for my coffee first thing in the morning tomorrow. Have you ever worked on a project moving water or fluids around with a microcontroller and valves and flow sensors? I'd love to hear about it. Tell us about it on the Element 14 community at element14.com presents or you can click the link in the description and it'll take you right to the page for this episode. We'll see you next time, and until then, keep making.